Hello everybody, welcome back to my summer car. My name is Victor. Today I'm going to show you guys how to build a Satsuma step by step. But before that, here are some of the things that you need to get from Timos before you start building. Now with all that being said, let's change up the music a little bit and let's get started with the first part which is to build the engine. Now let's enter the garage. So we're just going to grab our block over here. Now let's grab the crankshaft. To install the crankshaft, we're just going to hover over the engine block and once you see a check mark, we're just going to left click on our mouse. And now it's installed. Now let's grab our main bearings. And these are the main bearings. So we're just going to grab bearing 3. Install them right here. That's bearing 3. Now let's grab bearing 2s and 1s. So here's bearing 2. We're just going to install it in the middle. And bearing 1 goes towards here. Now to tighten down the bolts, let's grab our spanner side. So we're just going to press F on our keyboard to open it and now tap number 2 on your keyboard to activate the car tool mode. This will enable us to grab the spanner. By the way, all the bolt sizes will be put above my camera right here. So now I'm just going to press number 2 on my keyboard and let's find the 9mm spanner to tighten down these 9mm bolts. By the way, there are 6 of them. And to tighten it, we're just going to scroll forwards on our mouse to tighten it. So now I'm just going to press 1 on my keyboard to swap back to hand mode. And we're just going to grab our pistons which is located right here. So we're just going to grab piston 1 and now we're just going to find where is piston 1 located. It is much easier to rotate the block when you install the pistons. There we go. So now we're just going to install piston 1 right over here. So towards this side. Now we're just going to grab the remaining pistons. And that's the last piston. Now let's install the head gasket, which is located right here. And now let's tighten down the pistons. Just gonna rotate our block again and set it just like that. To tighten down the pistons, we need a 7mm spanner. So just gonna swap to number 2 again on your keyboard and find a 7mm spanner. There we go. Scroll forwards on your mouse to tighten it. Alright, so now the pistons are installed. Now let's move on to the oil pan. So now I'm just going to switch back to the hand mode which is number 1. I'm just going to grab the oil pan. I'm just going to install it. Now to tighten down the oil pan, we need two sizes of spanners. One is a 7mm spanner and the other one is a 13mm spanner. So since we just tightened down the pistons, we already have the 7mm spanner. So we're just going to press number 2 on our keyboard. Right, so now we cleared all the 7mm bolts. Now we're just going to swap to the 13mm spanner and tighten down this massive one over here. Now the next thing we're going to install is the camshaft. So let's just rotate our block again. Set it just like that and grab our camshaft. 
and install it right around here. So now we just need a 5mm spanner to tighten it down. Now let's install the camshaft gear which is located right here. So we're just going to grab it and install it on the camshaft right over here. To tighten down the camshaft, we're just going to press number 2 on our keyboard again to grab our spanner and we just need a 10mm spanner it's right over here and I'm just going to tighten it down just like that but before that as you can see right over here there's an arrow right here we just need to line it up with the block over here so we're just keep going to keep rotating it scroll forwards on your mouse to tighten it just going to keep tightening it until we align it Alright, since now we are almost approaching that side of the block right here, there's one slit over here. I'm just going to switch back to hand mode, grab the block, and set it vertically. So now we can see it much better. So we're just going to swap back to number 2. So basically, we just want to align this one and this one together. So we're just going to slowly tighten it. And now, it's aligned. So let's swap back to hand mode and let's grab the timing chain and we're just going to install it right here. So now we're going to install the timing cover. Just locate it right over here. To tighten down the timing cover, we need a 6mm spanner and there are 6 bolts. Now with the timing cover installed, let's move on to the water pump. Just gonna swap back to the hand mode and grab our water pump and install it right over here. And we need a 7mm spanner to install it. So we're gonna swap back to number 2 on our keyboard. And there are 4 bolts in total. Sorry, that's 5. Now let's install the water pump pulley. So we're just gonna swap back to number one. Grab the water pump pulley and install it right here. To install the water pump pulley, we need a seven millimeter spanner, which we already had. So we're just gonna swap back to number two and now we can tighten it down. There are four bolts in total. So next we're gonna install the crankshaft pulley, which is located right here and we're just going to install it right here now to bolt it down we need an 11 millimeter spanner so let's just grab a 11 mil spanner and we're just going to tighten it here now let's install the engine plate so i'm just going to rotate the engine like this i'm just going to grab the engine plate right over here just going to install it right over here and now we can build our clutch so we're just gonna grab the clutch cover plate just gonna put it down over here grab our pressure plate and i'll clutch this so to install it we're just gonna grab the pressure plate and install it to the cover plate and grab your clutch this and install it like that but before we install the clutch we have to install our flywheel and the flywheel is located right here so we're just going to install it now to bolt down the flywheel we'll need a seven millimeter spanner so let's just get that and there's six bolts in total by the way if you have an upgraded flywheel we can install it right now but since we do not have it we're just going to install the stock one And now I'm just going to swap back to hand mode and grab our clutch assembly and install it. Now to bolt down the clutch assembly, we'll need a 6mm spanner. So we're just going to grab that real quick and bolt it down. There are 6 bolts in total.
now let's attach the gearbox so we're just going to grab the gearbox which is right here and okay, install it now before we bolt down the gearbox we'll need the inspection cover installed as well so we're just going to grab the inspection cover and it's just going to sit right here to bolt down the gearbox we'll need a 7 mm spanner so let's just swap back to the hand tool mode and grab a 7 mm spanner just going to tighten down the 6 bolts and now we're just going to swap to a 10 mm spanner for the single bolt holding it in right here next we're going to install the drive gear which is located right here to bolt down the drive gear we need a 6 mm spanner and there are 7 bolts in total Alright, next we're going to install the cylinder head, which is right here. It helps when you set the block upright. There we go. Now we can, at the same time, we can just grab our rockers. Or rocker shaft, if you call it. There we go. So now we're just going to bolt it in. To install the cylinder head, we'll need a 7mm spanner. So let's just grab it and tighten down the 8 bolts. And now we're just going to grab a 8mm spanner to tighten down the rockers. There are 5 bolts in total. Now let's just tune the rockers before we put the rocker cover back on. So let's just grab a screwdriver. So now to tune the rockers, we're just going to Go over to rockers right here and scroll downwards on your mouse until it doesn't move like this just gonna keep scrolling okay it's not moving anymore now we're just gonna scroll upwards seven clicks on your mouse so one two three four five six seven and now we're just gonna do it for all of the rest of the screws Now let's install the rocker cover. And we'll need a 7mm spanner. Next, let's install the carburetor and the exhaust pipe. So I'm just going to grab the carburetor, which is right here. Just going to install it right here. And let's grab our exhaust, which is right here. To bolt it down, we'll need an 8mm spanner.
Next, let's install the alternator. So I'm just going to move the block back here. Just going to grab the alternator which is on the second shelf. To tighten down the alternator, we'll need a 7mm spanner and a 10mm spanner as well. So let's just go grab a 7mm. And now let's just grab the 10mm and tighten down the long bolt, which is back here. It's towards the back of the alternator here. Now let's grab our air filter for the carburetor. And now we'll need a 6mm spanner to tighten down those two bolts. Now let's install our alternator belt. So this can be bought from Timos. I'm just gonna grab it and it should install it right here. But I did not back off the alternator, so let's just back it off a little bit. Scroll up on your mouse to back it off. Now once we grab it, it should install. There we go. Now to tune the alternator, we're just gonna scroll down all the way on your mouse until it doesn't move. Okay, it's not moving anymore. Now we're just gonna scroll up on your mouse, two clicks. One, two. And now grab a screwdriver and tighten down the single screw. Next, let's install the spark plugs. So I'm just gonna rotate our engine like this. And I'm just gonna grab our box of spark plugs, which can be purchased from Timos. So we just need one box, which has four in it. There we go. Now we're just gonna grab any spark plugs and here are the holes, I'm just gonna put it right there. Now to tighten it, we don't use any spanners or sockets. We have a specialized socket which is right here. So this is called a spark plug wrench. I'm just gonna tighten down the spark plugs using this. And now it's installed. Next, let's install the oil filter. So this is the oil filter. Again, it's from Timos. I'm just gonna scroll up on your mouse. Next, let's install the starter motor. To tighten down the starter motor, we'll need a seven millimeter spanner. And there are two bolts in total. So let's just grab a 7mm and bolt down the outside one. However, there's another one hidden in there. There we go. So now the starter is installed. Next, let's install the fuel pump. And now we'll need a 7mm spanner to bolt down the fuel pump. and there are two bolts in total. Next, let's install the distributor, which is right here. Now, before we bolt down the distributor, let's just tune it. So let's just grab a screwdriver and we'll need the hand mode first. So we're just gonna swap back to number one on our keyboard and scroll down all the way until it doesn't move. Like that, it's not moving anymore. Now we're just going to scroll up on your mouse, 27 clicks. There you go, 27 clicks. Now we can bolt it down. Now there's one last thing that we need to tune, which is the carburetor. So let's just grab a screwdriver real quick. And look at the screw. Okay, there we go. Now we just need to scroll up on your mouse 50 clicks. 49 and 50. So now we're just going to scroll down 23 clicks. 1, 22, 23. And now the carburetor is tuned. Now with the engine completed, let's move on to chapter 2, which is to install the extras in the engine bay. So, first thing we're going to install is the brake and clutch lines.
To install the lines, you'll need a 7mm spanner. Now we're gonna install the brake and clutch master cylinders. To bolt it down, we'll need an 8mm spanner. Next, we're going to install the electrics. To bolt down the electrics, we'll need an 8mm spanner. Now we're going to install the fuel strainer. To bolt it down, we'll need an 8mm spanner. Now, let's install the subframe. We'll need a 10mm spanner to tighten down the bolts. Next is the steering rack. To install it, we'll need a 9mm spanner. Next, we're gonna install the radiator. We'll need a 7mm spanner to install the bolts. Now let's install the engine. And by the way, I'm going to show you guys a tip how to install the engine without a crane. So let's just grab our engine. So we are not using any crane this time around, just gonna grab the block and align it in the engine bay and we're just gonna check for the bolts that come through right there and now once you see the bolts and if you align it correctly there will be bolts appearing right here. So now to tighten it down we just need a 11mm spanner.
Next, let's install the radiator hose. To bolt down the radiator hoses, we just need a screwdriver. Now with the extra engine parts installed in the engine bay, let's move on to chapter 3 which is to install the suspension. So the first suspension bits we're going to install is the wishbone. To bolt it down, we'll need a 10mm spanner. Next, let's install the spindle. To bolt down the spindle, we'll need a 12mm spanner. Now we're going to install the brake disc. Now let's install the half shaft. To bolt down the half shaft, we'll need a 14mm spanner and a 9mm spanner. Next, let's install the steering rod. Now, before we bolt down the steering rod, let's install the suspension.
to bolt down the steering rod, we'll need a 12mm spanner. To bolt down the suspension, we'll need a 9mm spanner and a 10mm spanner. Now let's move on to the rear suspension. The first thing we're going to install is the rear trail arm. To bolt down the trail arm, we'll need a 12mm spanner. Now, let's install the rear springs. Now let's install the rear drum brakes. To tighten down the drum brakes, we'll need a 14mm spanner. Next, let's install the shock absorber. To bolt down the shock absorber, we'll need a 6mm spanner and a 12mm spanner. Now let's install the wheels that we got from the abandoned mansion. To bolt down the wheels, we need a 13mm spanner.
Now with the wheel fitted, we can push the Satsuma inside and get ready for chapter 4 which is to install the parts that go underneath the Satsuma. So now with the Satsuma in the garage, let's install the first part that goes underneath it which is the fuel tank. To bolt down the fuel tank, we need a 11mm spanner and a 12mm spanner. Next, let's install the fuel tank pipe. Next, let's install the exhaust pipe. To bolt down the exhaust pipe, we need a 7mm spanner. Now let's install the exhaust muffler. To bolt down the exhaust muffler, we need a 7mm spanner. Next, let's install the gear linkage. To bolt down the gear linkage, we need a 5mm spanner. Now with everything underneath the Satsuma has been installed, let's move on to chapter 5 which is to install the body panels. So the first body panel that we're going to install is the doors. To bolt down the doors, we need a 10mm spanner. Next, let's install the fenders. To bolt down the fenders, we need a 5mm spanner. Next, let's install the boot lid of the Satsuma. To bolt down the boot lid, first we need to open it. And now we can grab our 6mm spanners.
The next thing we're going to install is the rear bumpers. To bolt down the rear bumpers, we'll need an 8mm spanner. Next, let's install the rear lights. Now let's install the front bumpers. To bolt down the front bumpers, we'll need the 8mm spanner. Next, let's install the mud flaps. Now let's install the hubcaps for the wheels. Now with all the exterior parts almost installed except the hood which we will get to later on, now let's move on to chapter 6 which is to install the interior of the Satsuma. The first interior part we're going to install is the steering column. To bolt down the steering column, we'll need an 8mm spanner. Next, let's install the dashboard. To bolt down the dashboard, we'll need a 10mm spanner. Next, let's install the dashboard meters, but before that, let's install the radio and the clock gauge into the dashboard meters. To bolt down the clock gauge, we'll need a 7mm spanner. Now let's install the dashboard meters into the dashboard. To bolt down the dashboard meters, we'll need a 6mm spanner. Next, let's install the handbrake. To bolt down the handbrake, we'll need an 8mm spanner and a 5mm spanner. Now let's install the gear stick. To bolt down the gear stick, we'll need a 6mm spanner.
Now let's install the steering wheel. To bolt down the steering wheel, we'll need a 10mm spanner. Now let's install the back panel. Next, let's install the back seats. And to bolt it down, we'll need a 9mm spanner. Next, let's install the driver and passenger seats. To bolt it down, we'll need a 9mm spanner. Next, we're going to bolt down the pedal bolts right here, which will need a 9mm spanner. Now with the interior completed, let's move on to chapter 7, which is to wire up the Satsuma. Now before we wire up the Satsuma, let's unbolt some stuff from the starter motor. So we'll need a 7mm spanner to unbolt the single bolt before we start wiring up, which is right here. Now we can grab our wiring mess and wire up our Satsuma. So let's just grab our wiring mess. Let's start with the left side first. So we're just going to press F on our keyboard whenever there's a check mark. So we're just going to press F right here. And we're just going to bring it over to the headlights connector right over here. And now at the same time, we're just going to see the check mark over on the right headlight. And we're just going to press F and it's installed. Now, we're just going to press F again on the front headlights connector. And we're just going to bring it over to the main harness connector like that. Now let's grab our battery. So we're just going to grab our battery, it's going to install it right here. Now we're just going to take the negative terminal, press F, and it will go down to the ground battery connector. It's nearby the starter motor. So now we're just going to take the positive terminal, and again, back to the starter motor. Now, with the same positive terminal, right here, we just gonna bring it to the main harness connector, just like that. Now we're just gonna wire up the alternator, so we're just gonna go to the regulator over here, and we're just gonna bring it over to the alternator. There you go. Now it's wired up. Now the same regulator. We're just gonna bring it over to the main harness connector. Now we're gonna wire up the ignition coil. So we're gonna press F on the ignition coil and it's wired up to the main harness connector now we're just gonna wire up the radiator fan so we're just gonna reach in right here and we're gonna bring it over to the main harness connector now with the engine bay completed let's move on to the interior but before that we still need to tighten down that 7 millimeter bolt that we undo previously
At the same time, there's a 5mm bolt right here that we need to tighten down as well. Now we can move on to the interior. So the first thing we're going to install is the ignition switch to the fuse box. Now we're going to wire up instrument panel 2 to the fuse box. Next, we're going to wire up the radio to the radio hardness. Now we're going to wire up instrument panel 1 to the fuse box. Now we're going to wire up the light switch to the dash hardness connector. Now with the interior completed, let's move on to the rear of the Satsuma. So the first thing we're going to wire up is the fuel tank, which is around here. We're going to bring it over to the rear hardness connector, and we're just going to press F again on the rear hardness connector, and we're just going to bring it over to the uh, lights towards the back here. And again, F on that side there, and bring it over to the left side now. Now the Satsuma is wired up. Now with the wiring completed, let's move on to chapter 8, which is to put fluids into the Satsuma. So the first thing we're going to do is to top up the coolant. Let's open the radiator. Next, let's put in some motor oil. Now we're just going to put in some brake and clutch fluid into this cylinders right here. Lastly, let's grab our jerry can and put the fuel into the Satsuma. Now before we can start up the Satsuma, there are a couple of miscellaneous things that we need to do which is the tuning and to install the headlights. So let's move on to chapter 9 now which is the miscellaneous stuff that we did not do earlier. So let's grab the headlights, grab the bulbs first, 
grab the headlights and we're just going to install it when we see our check mark by pressing on the left mouse so we're just gonna left click and there we go now we're just gonna install the left side of the headlights to tighten it down we need a seven millimeter spanner Next, let's install the Satsuma front grille. To bolt it down, we'll need a 6mm spanner. Now we're going to move to the tuning part, which is to align the wheels. So we'll need a 14mm spanner To tune the wheels, we need to scroll up all the way on your mouse until it doesn't move Okay, now it stopped moving, now we're gonna scroll down 60 clicks Now let's tune the other side. Now with the wheels aligned, as you can see, that is as aligned as you will get for the left side now we're gonna check on the right side yeah it's pretty aligned so now let's move on to the final part which is chapter 10 which is to start up the satsuma but before that we still have a couple of things that we need to do which is to tighten up the battery so let's grab our 8 millimeter spanner and we're gonna tighten down the positive side first and now the negative side Alright, here comes the moment of truth. Will the Satsuma start up? So let's just get into the Satsuma and start it up. First thing I'm gonna do is to pull out the choke and start up. Oh, looks like the starter motor is quite bad. Yes, it lives. Now before we can call it a successful build, let's warm up the Satsuma and let's take it for a little test drive. So I'll see you guys in the morning. It's currently the next day, but before we can do our test drive, let's bolt on our hood. To bolt it down, we'll need a 6mm spanner. Now with the hood bolted down, let's warm up our Satsuma before taking it for a test drive. Alright, now the Satsuma is warmed up, let's push in our choke. And let's take it for a test drive and first thing i notice is that the alternator is not charging the battery so it's probably a bad alternator so we're just gonna lower down the handbrake and here we go all right the drive gear is engaging that means we bolt it down properly however the alternator is still not charging all right so let's just drive it for a little bit and check our alignment So far it's not pulling us to the left or right side, that means the car is aligned. Now 
Yeah, everything seems to be working fine. Yeah, our line is good. Guys working. So yeah, this at Suma works. If you guys enjoyed this build guide, don't forget to give it a like and get subscribed to the channel. And with that, my name is Victor, signing off. I'll catch you guys in the next video.